Hello cookbook friend and welcome to the Cookbook Divas YouTube channel. My name is Katie. Today I wanted to talk about the Gaijin cookbook, probably because I'm a bit of a Gaijin myself. <laughs> I hate admitting that, I'm sorry. He does too, so that's cool. Um, so this is by Ivan Orkin and Chris Ying. And I love this massive title, Japanese Recipes from a Chef, Father, Eater, and Lifelong Outsider. Yeah, it's great. And there's even a definition. I'm not going to read it. It's embarrassing, even for myself. So, um, I wanted to talk about this because I feel like this relates a lot to me. My husband and I love Japanese food. Ever since we went to Japan, it kind of became... It's like, it's a staple in our household. We try to make everything. Uh, we make all the curries, we make everything. We just, and we have to, because I've got celiac, so there's a lot of things with soy sauce and buckwheat and all kinds of stuff that I just need to make alterations to. Ramen, that's another one. So, um, Carrie and I were actually in the in the uh, Barnes & Noble not that long ago, and we both saw this. She gave me a look, and I was like, ugh, oh, fine. Yes, I need this cookbook. So, we're going to look through this together. Hopefully, it will inspire you to eat more Japanese cuisine and to embrace your inner gaijin if that's you or just being awesome. So, let's begin. This is a really adorable and geeky cookbook. I've been looking through it. I haven't made anything from it yet, but I'm really looking forward to. So, we have in the table of contents a good introduction. We have the recipes by category. There is eat more Japanese, open to anything, empathy, very cute. Then we've got otaku or geeking out, uh, good times, New Year's, and pantry at the very, very end. I'm always curious about the pantry being at the end, but we'll see. So let's kind of look through some of these recipes. He actually gives you right in the very beginning kind of what to expect for each chapter, so open to anything, and empathy, otaku, all of these things. He gives you a description so that you can't, you're not bouncing around and trying to figure out exactly what's going on in this cookbook. I have to note, the photography is gorgeous. I love that he's showcasing Japan, his home, him enjoying cooking, and just being a part of the culture. It's, it's really an awesome thing. So, this might seem really overwhelming. This is recipes by category. So, um, I'm not going to read them all off, obviously, but he, he, this is really nice because all of these recipes are placed throughout the book. So, for instance, we have broth, soups, and stews here. We start off with dashi, which is like on page 28, and then we move on to other kinds of soups. So, there's like Four four items down. It's pork and ginger pork and miso ginger stew. That's on page 119. So if you're wanting to basically create a dish, you're like, I have a lot of rice and I want to make a rice dish. You can basically just go to the rice section and find kind of, oh, I want to make this with my rice. Or if you have noodles, or if you want soup, or if you're like, I want something salady because it's really hot outside. I just think it's really helpful and also there's just different uh, preparations for a lot of these things he likes to make things westernized too which is kind of cool so that's a fun thing so one of my favorite things having your chapter and then all of the uh, recipes you'll find in there with the page numbers that's my favorite thing so I love that Makes it easier to prepare, especially if you got a big party coming up or something. It's really nice. So let's check out some of these actual recipes here. This is all your kind of introduction recipes. There's even how to cook rice, and he explains exactly why he has that. He's like, I know you guys all probably know how to cook rice, um, but there is a right way to do it. So even like udon, I love that, that some of these recipes do have step-by-step -step photos so that you don't get lost. Teriyaki yellowtail. This looks very tasty. So I'm moving on to actual recipes here. All right. So this is fermented soybeans or natto with tuna and squid. I got to say that was not my favorite thing when I tr when I did go to Japan, but I am always curious to see what it's like with other things. I had it by itself. So and it was more of a textural thing. The taste was fine. 
The texture was a little weird, but I'm curious. I don't even know where I could buy any. Probably an Asian market. And that's what that pantry section is going to be best for. So we have stuffed tofu pouches. This is a pretty common item. We have rice balls, onigiri. So this is really cool. Again, the step-by-step -step photos right here. So you don't get lost. You kind of know exactly, you know, how to put things together. With rice balls, there's different kinds of fillings. So he's, he's given you a list of different things you can put in them right here, which is really cool and helpful. This is where we get into some fusion foods. So we've got like mentaiko spaghetti. I think this is like octopus maybe. I don't know. I'm probably wrong. Oh, it's cod. I had no idea. This looks very tasty. If you love spaghetti, Japanese flavors, it's perfect. Kimchi pork belly. Very yummy. Bagels with Japanese-ish fixings. That's really cool. And then we have a whole bunch of different kinds of sandwiches you can do. If you're somebody that goes off to work on, like, on a site or something like that, this would be kind of helpful to have so you can have a variety of sandwiches. Here's the empathy section. I really think he's adorable. As I've been seeing in this cookbook, like, he just loves everything about Japanese culture and food. Here's a rice porridge, which looks really good. This is traditional breakfast, I guess. We have a Okinawa style soba with pork belly. Yum. I love the photos. They're just really, really crisp and clear. Here we go. Meat, different cuts of meat, things to recognize. Salmon and miso hot pot. This is excellent for part, like little tiny gatherings if you want to do hot pot. It's really nice for the fall or for autumn and winter time coming up. Geeking out otaku. So these are like fun, adorable party foods. Ooh, he has a whole gyoza. I think this is a gyoza pizza. I haven't looked into this this much, but wow, that looks amazing. I didn't even think about putting that together. I think that's crazy cool. Tempura party. This is an excellent idea. All these different vegetables. You can put meat and, you know, fish if you wanted to, but the vegetables are awesome. All the step-by-step -step photos for that. So I'm going to kind of skip over a little bit. I love the, um, the section. This is pretty much similar to the otaku section, but kind of like, you know, he's got a whole section on big, so there's like giant sushi here, but big gatherings, so like New Year's, Christmas, all kinds of foods you can put together. This is specific, specifically New Year's, and you can use a lot of these dishes for more than just New Year's. So we've got like whole fish cooked in rice, duck soba, that sounds good, uh, rice cakes or mochi. That's really, that's going to be something I really want to learn how to make. And then my final one I'm going to show you guys. Let's see. I want a good one. Let's see. Well, this isn't it, but candied sardines. That's interesting. I, I would be willing to try it. So then we've got your whole pantry list at the very back. That includes like pickled garlic, vinegar, chili oil, seasoning sauce. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can um, make yourself without having to go to the grocery store. This is very helpful for those of you that don't have an Asian market close by. You can find a lot of the ingredients at your local grocery store and just kind of put them together. So seaweed, I would imagine, is at almost every grocery store. Maybe not. You can order that online. But... Yeah, it's a really helpful, very cool cookbook. So I'm looking forward to cooking from this cookbook. There's a lot of cool fusion recipes, a lot of cool traditional recipes, a lot of recipes that you can share with friends and family. That's just really awesome, and I'm really enjoying it. So that is the Gaijin cookbook. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe and leave a review down below. We want to hear from you. Also, if you want more cookbook content, make sure to join us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and we have a cookbook blog. It's at cookbookdivas.com. We try to also publish our podcast every Friday. It's our cookbook weekly roundups. 
So make sure to join us for that. Thank you guys again and have a fantastic week.